Hi, Daniel here from Lepta Church. This week we're looking at something that's little. And so we might look at it and say, oh, that's, that's not too big of a deal in our lives. But even though it's little, it's really, really powerful. We're talking about the tongue or the words that we choose. And this sermon is called Great and Terrible Power. We're in James chapter 3, verses 2 to 5. Why is it called Great and Terrible Power? Because with your mouth, with your tongue, with the words that you choose, you have great and terrible power power in your hands. And there are things that are far less powerful and far less dangerous that we are so careful around, but we can be so careless with the words that we speak. And the heart of these verses is not just behavior modification that we look at them and we say, oh, these verses are neat. I'll try to be a little more careful with the words that I say. It's not that. It's seeing just how dangerous our words can be, just how powerful they are, and saying, Lord, I, I don't want to hurt other people. Lord, I want to speak life over people. I, I want to help people. I don't want to destroy people. And the truth of the matter is, Christians have destroyed people with their words throughout the ages. And this is something we need to understand, okay? And what's cool, verse 2 tells us that everyone needs this, okay? So that includes you and it includes me. Let's pray and let's look at what the Bible says about the words that we speak and we'll get a sense of just how powerful, great and terribly powerful our words truly are. Lord, we pray during this time that you would speak, that you would lead. Lord, I pray for the right words to say talking about the tongue here. I, I surrender my tongue to you and pray that the words that I speak are true to your word, and that we would all see just how powerful our words are. And Lord, we would be careful out of a heart of worship, out of reverence for you, saying, God, we want to be good stewards of this powerful tool. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. James chapter 3, verses 2 to 5. Let's look at it together. Starting in verse 2. For we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle the whole body. Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn their whole body. Verse 4. Look also at ships, although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. Verse 5, even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great a forest a little fire kindles. I love how the scriptures include everyone in this. They're like, we all stumble in many things, okay? <laughs> And you stumble in this, because if you don't stumble in word, if anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man. And you are not perfect, I'm not perfect, none of us are walking in perfection, being able to have a perfect perfect control over everything, okay? Able to bridle the whole body, it says in verse number two, okay? So this is something we all deal with. We all deal with. And maybe part of the reason it's hard for us to take our word seriously is because it's like, well, you know, if we all have an issue with this and we're never going to be perfect at it, does it really matter? And how important is it really? How much damage can it do? It is, as it says in verse five, a little member. It seems insignificant. So there are these uh, pictures that were given in these verses. Okay. So in verse three, this picture of a horse being directed by a little bit in the horse's mouth so that the horse can obey the person who's riding the horse and you can actually turn the horse using that little bit. A horse is so huge, so powerful. Verse 4 has this analogy of a ship. Look also at ships. They're so large and they're driven by fierce winds, it says in verse 4. But it's turned by a very small rudder, <laughs> a very small rudder, and goes wherever the pilot 
desires. Okay, so we're getting these pictures of something that's really huge and it's guided by something super small, super tiny. So the scriptures in verse 5 reaffirm, listen, the tongue is a little member. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. Okay, those are not mutually exclusive. They're both true. It's a little member and it boasts great things. And there's this interesting moment here, the second part of verse 5, that it's almost like the Lord is sitting back and marveling at the power, the great and terrible power of the tongue, of our words. See how great a forest a little a little fire sparks, okay? So a, a little a little fire can completely destroy even a great forest. And in the news, we hear of stories of, like in California, of a gender reveal party sparking a fire and a little thing. People would think, oh, it's just, it's just a little gender reveal party. Nothing's going to happen from this. Something huge can come from it. So don't make the mistake of saying, well, I know I'm never going to be perfect at it. It's, you know, we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in a word, he is perfect. I'm not perfect. So, you know, I'm never going to be perfect. And it's not that big of a deal. The scriptures are telling us, yes, it is a huge deal. And we see it throughout scripture. Remember in Proverbs, Proverbs 18, 21, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Death and life sounds pretty serious, doesn't it? And Jesus reminds us in Matthew 12, 36, that we will give an account in the day of judgment of every idle word that we have spoken. We will answer for the words we speak. Oh, this is serious. It's serious. Years ago, there was a big controversy. I think it was in 2016. This was really all over the news. Hoverboards were really cool, and kids were riding them, and it was like it was so futuristic. But there was a problem. They would explode. And what puzzled people was it didn't just explode when it like it was charging. Some of them would explode when they're not charging. Some of them were exploding while they were. One hoverboard actually exploded in a mall, at a mall kiosk, okay? Just boom, okay? So everyone that had hoverboards just understood, hey, what I have can actually explode and bring destruction and people's homes were even destroyed. There were fires and homes that burned down because of these hoverboards. So everyone who had a hoverboard, they, they were on high alert. They were like, okay, I know that this destruction could happen, right? You need to understand that if somebody would give someone a hoverboard, it might be a little bit like controversial, like, oh, are you wanting to burn their house down? You do need to understand different measures that you could take to try to stay safe with this thing because there was a lot of mystery. People were like, we don't know why these things are exploding. They're dangerous. And yet we all have a tongue. We all have words that we speak. And these words can bring death and life. And this moment in verse 5, it's marveling not at the amazing things that the tongue can do, but marveling at the destruction that it can bring. People don't understand the power of what they have. And over and over again, we can tend to just emphasize sins and different things that seem a lot more offensive and a lot more destructive and we can kind of overlook our words or we could say hey if i spoke hurtful words well me i had the right motives well you know what that hoverboard had the right motives right providing fun it doesn't matter when it burns your house down the motives don't matter when it brings total destruction and that's what can happen with our words and that's why as a community 
society leapt to church values, the way that we speak, our core values as a church are different than any other church's core values. Gentleness, empathy, patience. We have those core values because they not only affect our actions, they affect the way that we speak, what we speak, how we speak. And that is so vital. This isn't some small back burner issue. Yes, it is a little member, but it it boasts great things. There is great and terrible power in the tongue. And we need to respect that and understand that if we are going to go around saying all this stuff. We need to be mindful. And as it says in James chapter 1, verse 19 that we covered months ago, be slow to speak, swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. We're seeing the reason why. Because there's great and terrible power. You can destroy people's lives. And I've spoken to people who have had awful things spoken over them, careless things spoken over them. And you know what? It was it was terrible. There was destruction. I talked to one guy. He was he left the church for years and years and years. And there was somebody on the other side of that that might have thought, I have the right motives or it's not a big deal. I'm not robbing a bank. I'm not killing anybody. What's the big deal? I'm just speaking my mind. Well, you can speak your mind into destroying everybody. And it's not, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. The Bible is like begging everybody to please. The Lord is speaking to you and wooing your heart to see that Controlling what you say is not behavior modification, as you'll fail every time. If you see how destructive, how, how powerful the tongue is, how great and terrible the power is, maybe out of a heart of worship we could say, Lord, we see what we're capable of, and we don't want to destroy anybody. We don't want to be like this hoverboard that just explodes, and yet we have that capacity, don't we? Oh, but God can help us, and we can pray that the Lord would help us understand and remember just how great and terrible that power can be. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Proverbs eighteen twenty one. I hope this gets you excited, too, about speaking life. It's not just negative. It's great. And it can be terrible. And we all need to be mindful of just how powerful it is. Lord, we thank you for speaking to us today. It's good to get your perspective. And our perspective, our words can be a small matter. As it says in verse 5, it's a little member. But we can forget that second part, that the tongue boasts great things. See how great a forest a little fire kindles. We have to remember that. Lord, please, in the moments when we want to speak our minds and share things in a way that could be hurtful to others, remind us of these verses. We want to speak life and peace and bring hope and joy. We do not want to bring death and destruction. We love you. We thank you that you've given us this tool, our tongue. May we use it to your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for watching this message. If you have a comment, a question, anything that you'd like to share, you can share that below in the comments or you can email us at contact at leptachurch.com. If you haven't yet, Feel free and subscribe so you don't miss any of our videos, any of our messages or other videos and content. And we do hope to see you next video. Until then, God bless you and your family. And we're excited for the next time we get to spend together in God's word.